for more on Uvalde, what happened there, and the debate on gun reform here in the United States. Let me turn to Dr. Joseph Sacron. He's a gunshot survivor, also an advocate for gun violence prevention and a trauma surgeon at Johns Hopkins Hospital. Uh, Dr. Sacron, thank you for uh, joining us on the program. Certainly, we've seen changes on the federal level uh, since um, Uvalde massacre, with Congress passing a bill that enhances background checks for potential gun buyers under 21. It was signed by President Biden into law. But you got to wonder, does this really go far enough, especially when he, you heard our reporters say how many episodes of gun violence we've seen in this country since what happened in Uvalde? Yeah, well, look, thanks so much for having me on. And let me just answer that question by saying, no, it doesn't go far enough. It was a great first step to pass the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act. Um, but the reality is, is that, you know, today, you know, one year after Uvalde, where, you know, it's not just the 21 lives that were lost, it's families that were destroyed, it's a community that was decimated, and it's a country that continues to be re-traumatized by these senseless tragedies that are happening in cities and states all across America. We are facing one of the most important, if not the most important, public health problems of modern times. And it's about time that we put our children first at a time when, you know, the leading cause of death in children and adolescents is gun violence in America. So, Dr. Sacron, is Texas putting children first when they've actually loosened and widened access to firearms? I think that they have not. Uh, I think that, you know, the uh, elected officials, I won't say all of them, but a significant uh, proportion of elected officials have not had the moral courage to pass common sense gun legislation. And it's, you know, unfortunately, not just Uvalde, right? We have seen time and time again where Texas has had numerous tragedies. And let me just point out that, you know, we are talking about the mass shootings, which, of course, get a significant amount of media attention. But let's be clear, this is happening every day in trauma centers across America, where young brown and black men that are being slaughtered on our, on our streets. And we have a responsibility to elevate those stories. And we have a responsibility to get off the sidelines of history and be part of the solution in trying to make communities safer. Dr. Sacron, we've seen AR-style weapons being used time after time after time, including what the gunman in Uvalde had. He was an AR-style weapon. Um, these are weapons that are designed to kill in masses, in large numbers. Surviving an, you know, an attack by AR-15 is very unlikely. Talk to me about the kind of lethal damage injury from AR-15 does, especially to a small child. Yeah, the lethality is tremendous. Look, we uh, just recently finished working with the Washington Post on, on an incredible piece called The Blast Effect that demonstrates the type of destruction that happens when you have that type of energy imparted on the human body. And you can imagine what that does to little babies, to children. I mean, there is a, a reason that some of the kids that are hit by these projectiles were unidentifiable by parents. Just think about that for a second. These, you know, bullets that hit the body at such fast speed and impart this energy can pulverize bullet bone, can destroy tissue, and they cause this blast effect that increases the lethality uh, in folks. And so there's definitely a role for us to play as we think about how to minimize uh, that death, uh, destruction, and disability. So, Dr. Sacron, what do you say to gun industry advocates, gun owners who say, we do need AR-15s, we need it for hunting, we need it for shooting competitions, and they should stay legal? Well, here's what I'd say is, number one is, if you need an AR-15 for hunting, you probably should pick a different sport. 
But the reality is, is like these military style assault weapons should not be on our streets. This is about responsible gun ownership. And let me just say that the majority of Americans, including the majority of gun owners, agree with these common sense legislations that folks are proposing in order to make communities safer. One of which is to prevent these type of weapons from being on our streets. We're going to leave it there. An important conversation as always with Dr. Joseph Sacklin. Thank you very much. Thanks so much.